here in Smashville. Brazil will jump center for Vandy against Ben Allen Lubin, who's coming off of a double double 25 and 11 just a couple of miles away and Vandy's season closing win against Florida Razorbacks under 500 on the season and early three is an air ball from Tremont Mark and a save attempt ends up in the hands of the Commodores Tyron Lawrence hands it off to Ezra Magnon. Here's the starting five. Includes, for just the fifth time this season, Malik Presley, number 13, freshman out of San Marcos, Texas. Lawrence got a mismatch on Chandler. Gets it back and shares it again. Magnon passes up the three with the drive. And the follow jam is there from Ben Allen Lubin. Ben Allen Lubin actually had a double-double in the first 22 minutes in their first matchup. You mentioned Arkansas going one of 17. A lot of that was because of the changing of the defenses by the Commodores, Tom. Here's the starting five. Eric Musselman puts on the floor. And it includes Caleb Battle, who's led them in scoring as many times off the bench as he has as a starter. Shot clock at five. El Ellis for three. Splash. Been the huge difference, right? The transfer from Louisville, Kentucky. Certainly over these last five or six games has been playing outstanding basketball, averaging three assists. Our guy Pat Bradley said that's the most that anyone's averaged this year for the Razorbacks. Yeah, it's over the last four. It's an indicator of where this team has and hasn't been in terms of sharing the basketball. AQ Roberts buries the corner three. Huge dunk coming out party in that Florida game not only showing his athleticism but his skill set part of this nice freshman class that coach Jerry Stackhouse has assembled where does either team want this game to be from a pace and scoring standpoint slower the better for the Commodores they want to run only when they want, want to run for the Razorbacks they want it chaotic they want to get up and down as much as possible and keep it out of the half court Lawson has his shot blocked. Brazil brings it out of there. Chaos is a good word to describe this Arkansas program on the season. And a foul on the three ended up being a shot to the jaw of Malik Preston. And a three-shot trip to the free-throw line coming for battle. This is what he does. Gets to the free-throw line, and he cashes in. He has made 78 of his last 84. Second in the league in free throws made on the year. For young players, what Tom just mentioned is so essential to being a prolific scorer, no matter what level you're on. I don't care if you're, uh, you know, middle school, high school, collegiate, or the NBA. Getting to this charity strike is the best way to manufacture points. 14 of his points against Vandy, their matchup five games ago, came from the free throw line. Battle knocks them both down. It was a game after Battle exploded for 342 against Missouri. I asked him what his thought process was going into that Missouri game because he wasn't shooting the ball particularly well. He was in a bit of a slump. He said, I, I never get in slumps because I think I can always make it part of that East Coast Jersey confidence that exudes from this score. Agnon had 22 in the matchup against Arkansas earlier in the regular season. Gets it back from Luba. Lawrence well defended on the back cut. Mignon keeps it himself and bat, uh, pardon me, Brazil brings down the rebound. Kevin Brazil has been in and out of the lineup. Arkansas has had 13 different starters over the course of this very disjointed season. Lawson's jump up is off. Yeah, right now Arkansas just trying to get it too quickly. They play better when that basketball moves, dribble drive and dish. Even if they get a couple of passes, their offense seems to work much better. Here's Presley, and a three ball goes. It's his second three of the season. You know, we talk about hitting the reset button when it comes to the postseason and the conference tournament. For a guy like Malik Presley, here's an opportunity to show what you can do. Yeah, I would agree. We, we mentioned that freshman class, Malik Presley, part of it, four-star recruit, playing well here early. Behind the back dribble is wasted and lost. Three on one for Vandy. Here's Presley, and he got it taken away by Brazil. Little intimidated by Brazil at 16. Battle, no hesitation on the break to put it up from deep. No numbers. Anyone doesn't care. He finishes off the window. Quick. And a push ahead with Brazil leaking in the two-hand jam. 
I call it cherry picking. What do you call it? <laughs> An easy basket by Brazil. You know, anytime these teams get up and down like that, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, I think it favors Arkansas. Presley with the drive and dish, another empty possession. Here come the Hogs. Battle. Not the best ball handler in the world, but he is an elite shooter and still finds a way to get to the free throw line and score. Arkansas sitting at 16 losses in the season. The last time they lost 17 was 2010. Ellis. Nope. And here's Vagnon. Vagnon with the burst to get in the lane, and he's able to draw the foul. They will not count the bucket. And the foul charge at Tremont Mark. What a start we have here in Nash Vegas. Vandy up by two. Brandon Wells. Here in Smashville. Looks like he took a puck to the face, huh? Just play on? Yeah, that happens, man. It's called hoops, baby. Especially in March Madness. Jerry Stackhouse really good at running sets out of out of bounds. Back screen. Not there. Now it's Mignon time. Mignon guarded by Ellis. They get a post touch and a turnaround, and that's too strong for Ben Allen Lubin. It seems like when Lubin has a big productive game, that's been a key for Vanderbilt this season. He's coming off of a double double against Florida, 25 and 11. Debo Davis on the floor for the first time for the Hogs. What a career he's had in some clutch moments. Kai Mitchell is inside. He's comfortable coming off the bench, one of the most productive players, and he's able to draw the foul on Lubin. That's the matchup of the game. We haven't talked about it a lot, but Makai Mitchell, the most physical player for the Arkansas Razorbacks, and Vin Allen Lubin, the young freshman, the most physical player for the Commodores. Whichever one of those guys are able to not only establish but sustain the inside presence gives their team a huge advantage. Mitchell, fifth-year player out of Washington, D.C., it's the first one to roll home. He's coming off of an 18-point game and an overtime loss on the road in Tuscaloosa. His dunk rimmed out at the end, which opened the door for the Bama win. Lawrence, meanwhile, we're keeping Brandon Wells busy over there. And he's limping around behind the Vandy bench. Yeah, obviously, you look at that backcourt, Ezra Mignon and Tyron Lawrence, if you don't have them complete, Along with Ben Allen Lubin, there are three double-figure scores. It makes it an uphill battle for the Commodores. Well, Vandy wants to go here with Magnon running the point. Isaiah West on the floor for the first time. Begging to get it inside. Jerry Stackhouse animated on the Vandy bench. The sophomore, Ben Allen Lubin, puts it on the floor. Spins and gets denied. They get Mitchell with the foul. There we go. So both guys going at one another. Trying to get the other one in foul trouble. I think both coaches understand the importance of establishing this inside presence. And you saw battle come down on the double team just a little too late. I would expect one of the coaches or both to make a chess move to where they either double or at least begin to show a double a little bit harder on both of these bigs. And Alan Lubin spent last year playing for Mike Bray at Notre Dame. 74% from the free throw line on the season coming out of Orlando where he was a four-star four recruit first team all state And Lubin knocks them both down What do you view as Arkansas's offensive identity in the half court? Well, it's going to change now because Vanderbilt's made their first chess move. They went to that matchup zone, Tom. You told me to watch the film. I watched it. They went to a 3-2 and a 1-3-1 in that previous game, and here it causes a turnover immediately. Yeah, Mitchell coughs it up. Second turnover for the Hogs. They ran three different zones in the first half of that previous matchup at Bud Walton. Rebounded by Brazil. Brazil wanted to shoot and nearly shuffled his feet. Now he'll put it up. Off the back rim for the 32% three-point shooter, but an extra possession for the Hawks. Mitchell into Lubin. He's really leaning into it. Brazil another offensive board. Battle begging for a touch and said Ellis hits the mid-range. Nice work. Makai Mitchell not able to get deep enough using that crab dribble against Ben Allen Lubin. 
but the offensive glass was the secret on that sauce. West with the crossover move on Devo Davis. Bodies collide, but no whistle. And here come the Hogs the other way in a tie game. Ellis uses the screen from Mitchell. Throws it away. Hey, I'm just curious. Can you ever go too fast in a pick and roll where you leave your big behind? Absolutely. I think that's a great call, Tom, because oftentimes bigs get fouls or get accused of not being in the right position, but it is up to the guard to make sure that they set the big man up correctly. And that time, it was a little fast, maybe miscommunication that time with Ellis attacking the basket, and he'll take a seat. So Ellis sits, and with his Vanderbilt team, they're hanging right in there, four for nine to start this game, including a couple of makes from behind the arc. Tassos Camacharos is in the game for the first time, number 21 in black. Here's Lubin. Vandy has missed its last three field goal attempts. Nice shake on Mitchell and a Ooh, finish. Pretty. Inside pivot with the explosion to the basket. I don't know if there's anyone on this Arkansas team that can stop Ben Allen losing one-on-one. Here's Devo Davis. Got the screen from Mitchell and ripped his way through. And another Van uh, Arkansas turnover. Here's Isaiah West. He took his foot off the throttle. Camateros for three. At the outset, that looked like an easy deuce. Yeah, nice job of Brazil hustling back. I thought it was the right business decision by West as well. A little sloppy, another hog turnover. Their fifth. And a finish with the left hand by Taylor. Exactly what we saw in the first matchup. When Vanderbilt made that run in the second part of the second half, after being down 20 to 10 at Bud Walton Arena, it was because of turnovers from the Razorbacks. They're slacking off Mitchell. He finds Mark. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Battle. Back to Brazil. Shot clock at five. Mitchell hesitates. Shot clock at two. And the baseline jumper is good. So right now, Tom, you don't have a quote-unquote point guard on the floor for the Razorbacks right now. You've just got five basketball players, really good, talented players. But because they moved the basketball, they're doing much better. Brazil with the steal. Tried to keep it himself. Finds Devo Davis. And the loose ball turns into a bucket for Davis. Evo's only one for his last 11 over four games. His impact has really fallen off. Makai Mitchell in the passing lane with the takeaway. And a bump will send Mitchell and sends all of us to a break. We are locked at 16. And as far to say as he's one of the most challenging guards that he has to prepare for. And we know Coach Eric Musman is one of the best preparation coaches in the country. You look for Paul Lewis, West, they'll have to do it as a committee. Not one guy can replace Tyler Lawrence. Lewis on the floor right now, and then three from the wing is off the mark. And Paul Lewis, a sophomore out of Woodbridge, Virginia, finds the rebound, and he gets it rejected by Brazil. Feels like the game's moving just a little bit fast for Lewis right now. Yeah, no doubt about it. And if you look at Paul Lewis, he's 6'2". We talked about West making a business decision. Paul Lewis says, I'm going to go for it. But is deterred rather quickly. Lewis guarded by Devo Davis. It's an Arkansas team, as you see, is fifth in the country in blocks, better than six per game. And it's been a host of swatters who have contributed that over the course of this season. Quick turnaround. Beautiful touch from Evan Taylor for his second field goal. Yeah, close to 1,200 points at Lehigh. Hasn't quite gotten that stroke as consistent here with the Commodores, but is a proven score, Tom. Davis had Mitchell on the roll. Here's Mark. Evo Davis for three. Got it. Boy, he shot that with confidence. He had missed his last ten three-point attempts. And 
Evan Taylor going to work. Tough one on one move. He's got half a dozen now. We talked about Evan Taylor. Not only close to 1,200 points, but 600 rebounds. Two time All Patriot lead selection. He's a guy the Stackhouse would love to see step up right now. Jeremiah Davenport follows his own miss with another. Andy with a one point advantage. Here's Roberts to Taylor with a baseline drive. Andy keeps the ball moving. Threes off the mark and the rebound into the hands of the Razorbacks and Davenport. Yeah, solid defense and defensive rotation that time by the Razorbacks. Mitchell left and behind and finishes. Vandy thought that was a hook on Comateros, but they didn't get the whistle. What'd you think, Tom? I thought he just left him behind. <laughs> did you see it? Did you see the hook in this angle? I'd have to see it again. Shot clock and single digits for the Commodores and loose with the basketball out of bounds off of Arkansas. All Here right, we go. Here's your look. Let's put on the stripes, Tom. Using that crab dribble, trying to feel. Oh, that's definitely a hook. <laughs> but he did it so quick and smooth. You know, as a basketball player, you can get away with that, especially when you make the shot. Already had him leaning a little bit. Yeah. Kind of helped him, right? <laughs> Ready to go in that direction. Let me help get you out of the way. Only five seconds in the shot clock. Onion was open. They didn't get it to him. That was three. Crossover between the legs. Another crossover. Challenge two. Wow! What a move by Ezra Onion! He is so good. When the game is on the line, when there's pressure, when it looks like there's an impossible play to make, Ezra Mignon is one of the best in the SEC. Ellis finds Mitchell. And once again, using that side pick and roll, that one a little bit better. And this one as well. Well, it's pretty simple with the numbers for South Carolina. They have earned through their resume the respect of a top 15 team. Mm. Unfortunately, computers aren't usually easily swayed. So you think about it, they're top 50 according to the computers, and it's nothing to sneeze at, but top 15 based on the resume. And I think on Selector su Sunday, that resume, what you've done, should count for a little bit more than what people think or computers think you may do. I agree. Because I certainly don't understand how their net rankings still so low after all the wins this year. Yeah. And who they beat. An incredible season for Mont Paris and the Gamecocks. Part of a four-way uh, tie for second place in the regular season. And because of the tiebreakers, they fell to the five seed. From Mark back on the floor for Arkansas. Here's Debo Davis. Davis took a three-game hiatus from the team earlier this season. It didn't seem like he was all the way there in terms of being fully invested with this squad through most of the conference season. Blowout loss at home to Auburn, I think, was the first real surprise for this Arkansas team. Remember, after their non-conference home win against Duke, which, according to folks, were there one of the loudest events in Bud Walton arena history. Sure. We got Mitchell from the midi, and that's no good. Tom, keeping my eye on Tyron Lawrence here. He looks to be moving okay. We'll see when he gets the ball in his hand. Can he explode and move as he typically does? Didn't have to explode because nobody was guarding him. Gets his first <laughs> bucket of the game. Seven 20-point games in the season for Lawrence. Ellis running the point now for the Hogs. So no battle on the floor until the next whistle. He's set to check in. And caught a break because the whistle came early. He'll be charged to Malik Presley, and that is his second. How about Lawrence being wide open? Well, you know, anytime you get penetration to the basket, it's going to draw the defense. And when that happens, you're going to see wide open plays, right? Right there, you're going to see he's going to penetrate over there, and then the pass is going to go right next. And you see you can't have the actual following of the Arkansas defense because the ball's popping. It's moving too quickly.
for the Razorbacks. Triple punt from Mitchell. That's like my Starbucks order, and he's able to finish. <laughs> he's got eight. That you didn't get me, uh, sir. Sorry. Thought we were family, yeah, man. You guys were talking about chocolates on Valentine. I can't even get Starbucks. I thought you didn't like sugar. Here's Lawrence. <laughs> you always got something to say. <laughs> And Ben Allen Lubin getting back into the scoring slot. He's got eight now. He leads all Vandy scores, three or four from the floor. What a win this would be for Jerry Stackhouse and company. Four point lead here, late first half. I don't know really how to characterize oh. Brazil with the jam. Back to Vandy. They are. 1 and 12 away from home yet. We are in their home city. So you characterize it by the building or the location Lubin for three Wow, and we go back to four Man this young team Really beginning to come together we Talk about that win over Florida and the Gators didn't play their best game But the Commodore still beat one of the best teams in the country in the Florida Gators Ellis left it short Last two wins have come against Florida and then against this Arkansas team. Back down in the corner by Lubin. Eric Musselman is more than frustrated over that Arkansas sideline. Here's Lawrence for three. And I think he's frustrated by the defensive effort so far from his hogs. Vandy is shooting 55% in this game. Including four of six from three. Well, oftentimes teams, in particular teams with really good offensive players, which is what Arkansas has, they allow their defense to be impacted by their offense. And you talked about the fact that they were allowing the Commodores to shoot so well from the perimeter, where well, they're only shooting 29% from the three point line themselves. And so for the Razorbacks right now, I think they got to get the basketball inside. Be more physical on the offensive and defensive end. Well, the scoring in the Arkansas games have really taken a leap up lately. Lawrence fouled on the drive. Musselman thought it should have been a carry at the top of the key, and Lawrence slow to get up, nursing that ankle. We talked about Caleb Battle being slippery. Here's another guy. One, two, year old step through the defense of Mark as well as Mitchell smooth operator mm. and that southpaw always finds a way to get back to his left and he looks like he grabbed the right hamstring a little bit when he fell I didn't know we we're gonna play operation in this game I would have hit the buzzer with the tweet <laughs> seven point Vandy lead. Your age I know. <laughs> and I remember the game you're showing our age man cut that out Tom Lawrence hit the free throw line Three-point play. Vandy has scored 13 of the last 17, and here's a little 1-2-2. Two, two. Vandy broke out three different zone looks in the first 20 minutes of the matchup at Bum Walton, stolen by Lubin. Burst to the baseline, oh. and Presley jams it home! Young fella! Too short, perhaps. 10 point Vandy lead doors on an 8 nothing run battle between the legs sidestep. No Magnon crossover he just torched battle on his way in Eric Musselman is free throw line seven free throw attempts the 23 field goal attempts for Arkansas That is not a winning combination based on how they play Alyssa in her post game report talked about how many whistles were blown the first time these two teams met Here's Mitchell on the block Had to use a lot of clock just to get to this point because of the press Evo Davis short corner So rebound by Lubin so Tom I talked to Vanderbilt staff a little bit before the game and they said we want to make the Razorbacks think and so they've got quality downhill drivers, Jermon Mark, Caleb Battle, L. Ellis. If we continue to keep them off rhythm, 1-2-2 two, two zone, 3-2 zone, 1-3-1, one, one, then we feel like we can keep them from scoring offensively. J.Q. Roberts whistled for the foul. That is his first. So, so how do you make a team think when you've already shown zone against them? They should know what you have 
you're bringing to the table. Yeah, they should. You know, but some players are who they are. And for guys like Caleb Battle, they're never going to want to face a zone. Uh, they don't have a team full of shooters. Uh, but I, I think they can make an adjustment by getting stops defensively, which will prohibit the Commodores from setting up. Three on two for Vandy. A run out reverse is off the mark. Another blown bunny. Should be more than a 12-point lead because of the Vandy takeaway so far tonight. Here's Debo Davis with the left. And there it is. You get a stop, no zone, you got a man-to-man -man defense, and you get to just play pickup basketball with talented offensive players for the Razorbacks. That ends a 10-0 Vandy run, but still a double-digit lead. Now, Eric Musselman has erased bigger leads in this building in the NCAA tournament when he was at Nevada twice. He erased leads of 14 points plus, once against Texas and one against Cincinnati when they were down 22, the second largest comeback in NCAA tournament history. Ooh, go get it, young fella. How about that? This was the surprise from that season. Talking with Musk yesterday, he said, yeah, this was my favorite postseason moment, perhaps. That was March of 2018. His Nevada team scored 32 of the last 40 points in that game. Now, the first round, they're down against Texas 14 in the second half. And against uh, Cincinnati, they're down 22 with 11 minutes to play. That took them to the Sweet 16. So he's got great memories in this building. Well, Coach Eric Musselman is one of the best in the business, regardless of what happened this year and this record. He's been the last man standing last two or three years in the SEC. And let's remember, even in their last game versus Vanderbilt, with about three minutes left to go, they held Vanderbilt without a field goal, and they made seven in a row to close the gap to make it a one-possession game. Uh, I think it was Mignon who hit a couple of free throws to ice it, and Tremont Mark missed a three that could have tied it. But they, this is going to be a game of runs on both sides, Tom. I thought it was uh, highly entertaining how you approached Musk yesterday at shoot-around in his response. Correct me if I get this wrong, but you said something along the lines of, Coach, it's often said... That you learn, <laughs> you learn the most when you lose, and so there, and he cut you off, and he said, "Well, then I must be the smartest person in the building today." <laughs> yeah, that was good. You paraphrased it quite well. <laughs> Throw a filter on there. Here's Magnon with the kick in the corner, and a rebound by Caleb Battle. This is an Arkansas team that has allowed. 93 points a game to their opponents over the last four on average. That is a monster number. Rejected by Mitchell. Recovered by Magnon. And Muss is frustrated on that sideline. And the reason he's frustrated, look at the body language of the Razorbacks right now. Everybody's straight, standing straight. This is March. Yeah. This is the time where you're fighting, trying to set your own narrative as we talked about. He doesn't see that from his guys. Magnon off balance doesn't matter. Reminiscent of his game winner against a and over on the West End. A 12-point Vandy lead. Mitchell offers a screen. Battle takes it again and now finds his big. Into the corner for Davenport. Well, from a process standpoint, that might have been one of the best possessions for Arkansas. Tonight. I would agree. The ball moved. It changed sides of the floor. Jerry Stackhouse taking his use it or lose it timeout. And I guarantee you he's going to come up with something out of this timeout. One of the best seconds away from hearing from the great Ron Slay and company. Peter Burns anchoring our coverage in the corner here at Bridgestone Arena. Here's Magnon. There's a pair of a difference between the shot and the game clocks. Magnon guarded by L. Ellis. Arkansas comes out to trap Magnon. Shot clock at five. Magnon got to get it up. Got the screen. Shot clock at one. Fade away. Money! Ooh, Here's oh, from oh. Magnon. Has been El Magnifico here in the first. Over three halves against Arkansas is 13 for 15. What a run and what a run of efficiency. Lubin having trouble getting it inbound and a five second call. All right, that might just be one random turnover. But I think from an Arkansas perspective, that is a great sign that Musselman's 
message was delivered and listened to at the half because they came out with some intensity. Yeah, and let's remember that's how they got back into the basketball game when they were down double figures with about six minutes left to go at Bud Walton Arena. Musselman started to pressure Vanderbilt full court. They started to turn it over. Uh, they played faster, quicker shots, and they were able to get back in that basketball game and lost by one possession. So Arkansas will have the opportunity now to steal a possession without a second coming off the clock. Evo Davis starting the second half for the Hogs as he plays in his 131st game as a Razorback and has him now ninth in school history. Shot clock already at five. Jamal Mark challenging too. Yeah, we got a game now. The body language completely different than the Razorbacks. Would love to see the response from the Commodores as well now that they're getting this pressure. Brazil came all the way out to midcourt on Magnon. This was a game that Arkansas led 21 to 20 before Vandy went on its run and now a foul charge to Chandler Lawson. He's from just a few hours away over in Memphis. Well, Lawson has a seven foot six, I believe, wingspan and he used every bit of it against JQ Roberts. And I like the way that Roberts attacked the basket. So here's Jaqueline Roberts, known as JQ, from Bloomington, Indiana to Bloomington North, which has put forth some hoopsers over the years. Guys like Pat Knight, of course, grew up in Bloomington with his dad coaching, Jared Jeffrey, Sean May. Mm. There's some talent in one high school gym, huh? Yeah. Passing well, through the same door? Well, and it's one of the reasons why I think in spite of the fact that the Commodores have struggled this season, Coach Jerry Stackhouse had it going in the right direction. Remember, Colin Smith goes down mm -hmm. with the Achilles injuries. They've had uh, Lawrence miss three or four games. Very tough in one of the best leagues in all of college basketball. 4 and 14 in the league. Two of their conference wins coming over the last four games. Another bucket for Mark and perhaps more of a sense of urgency from the Razorbacks. Well, you asked me in the first half what pace was better for each team. Arkansas has made their punch here early in the second half. They want to get it up and down. See if the doors can withstand it. Roberts for three buries it. Wow. Another freshman, 6'8", 220. What a bright upside. Brazil puts it on the floor. And it will go out of bounds but stay with the Hogs. J.Q. Roberts on the other side has already matched his season high, career high for a freshman with eight. He's got Brazil in his sights. Caleb Battle only had three points in the first half. He's still sitting at three. Remember, 33 points a game over his previous five and a foul in the backcourt on his shove. Tell you something that I see really early. So we've had this response by the Razorbacks, Tom, but the response from the Commodores is they are becoming a little bit more physical defensively. And, and I'm anxious to see how Arkansas responds to that. They have not responded well to more physical teams this season. Arkansas going to pick up three-quarter court. I love the fact that Musselman's doing it now. You see coaches do that the last five minutes of the game when it's already out of reach. Razorbacks realizing they're down 15. Whether you lose by 50, whether you lose by one, you still lose. I like the fact that Musselman's going for it. Lawrence has been battling an ankle injury. Back up from Agnone and it's kicked away. He's throwing them off a little bit. They're out of rhythm. Uh-huh. And that's what it... That's what you want, uh, but this is the end where they've got to start to manufacture some points, which we know that they're capable of doing. Here's Davis. And now Tremont Mark transferred from Houston, and he can make some tough twos. All six of his points have come in the last two minutes. Young cut off by Davis. Andy trying to relieve some of that pressure. Here's Presley who got off to a hot start. 
And Brazil finds the board. Good shake. And it's rebounded by Lubin. Many teams coming off of an upset win at home against Florida. Magnon finds the crease again. He's got a dozen. How quick was that time? He lulls you to sleep, in particularly in transition, where you think he's just going to bring it up normally. And that's the job of a point guard. You should test the defensive transition for 40 minutes of basketball. Three ball good from Caleb Battle, his first field goal. Remember, he had 36 in the previous matchup. 23-year-old transfer from Temple. Another drive and another bucket. This time it's Presley and he's going to the line. Another four-star recruit. 2023 McDonald's All-American game nominee. Uses his speed under control, absorbs the contact, and keeps his eyes on the rim. For those young players watching at home, you've got to continue to keep your focus on that rim. So puts Malik Presley at the free throw line. He was an all-around standout at San Marcos High School in Texas. 20 points, 9 boards, 4 assists, and 2 steals a game. As a four-star recruited senior year, he's got a three-point play. Presley and Roberts have had a great start tonight. They've each turned in 8-point games. Back to the 3-2 matchup zone now. Vanderbilt trying to throw Arkansas off. Brazil, confident to shoot the three. He started the last three after missing seven games with a knee injury. Remember, he had a torn ACL. It's the ninth game of the season last year for Arkansas after transferring in from Missouri. And his former team will take the floor to battle Georgia in our nightcap tonight. Davis knocks it away. Here's Tremont Mark. And here comes Arkansas. There you go, Razorbacks. Use that length and athleticism to get out of the passing lanes. Try to disrupt Ezra Magnon. Get the basketball out of his hands. Rejected by Mitchell. And behind the line, it's Mark again. And the Razorbacks now on a run. Here we go. Over and disrupting them offensively. Five of seven shooting tonight for Mark. By the way, our friends at hogstats.com provide this nugget. It was a 41-27 Vandy lead at the half since World War II. Arkansas is 2-56 and in games where it scored less than 30 in the first half. And the opponent had more than 40. We're looking to make some history. And we got to pay some bills. Seven-point lead for Vanderbilt. Cameron, but a shooter to knock one down. He, by the way, <laughs> he, he was so uncomfortable because he said, "I've never shot a 16-foot jumper. I got to be behind the line for me to really feel comfortable." <laughs> Evo Davis with the drive. Here's Brazil working against that zone, and a one-foot fadeaway is an air ball. Yeah, that's not it, right? That ain't it. If you're if you're Brazil, man, you've got to use that length and athleticism to get to the basket. You've got to continue to maintain your aggressiveness if you're the Razorbacks. Hogs trying to hold on to momentum, need to stop. A spin gets nowhere. Here's Magnon. Back into the corner for Presley. Presley shares it, and Lubin, the late bucket. Nice. Interested to watch how this young group for Vanderbilt continues to adapt to this pressure because they're now being forced to just make basketball plays versus running their sets. Davis over the shoulder to Mitchell. Beautiful back cut. And the circus shot will earn a trip to the free throw line. He almost put it off. So battle's got two coming. And it's charged to Tyron Lawrence. Caleb Battle, obviously graduated from Temple. Had great numbers over there. Averaged 18 points in 27 games. Had 13 of 20 plus. Close to 90% while it was over there from the charity strike. As you see now, crew here in Bridgestone with pregame halftime and postgame coverage. Keep in mind, you can always watch these shows as well as every game on the ESPN app. Who's that handsome guy, the second panel? Where I was going to ask you what, what you thought, yeah, Tom Hart. Look at those guys up there. You think they were doing any work? No. 
Appreciate you, Cam. The slaves playing that game with the king almost gets flooded, and you got to make something happen so he doesn't drown. Oh, man. A battle knocks a free throw down. It's an eight-point game. Here's Lawrence. Good help by Mitchell. Helping again, and he forces an Aaron shot. Arkansas has a chance to push. Brazil never gave it up. Here's Debo Davis. This is the winning recipe for the Razorbacks. Now, for the Commodores, it's paramount that they do not allow themselves to get behind to keep the pressure off of them. Mitchell gets a touch. And spins on Lubin. Follows his own miss. Yeah, nice job of using that crab dribble to get exactly where he wanted to. He was a little out. He wanted to get a little bit closer to point blank range. They're really extending the Arkansas defense going with a 2 3. And a nice feed for Lubin. Mitchell rejects it. He just swallowed that thing up. It's a six point lead, and the Hogs begging for momentum, and they'll get a whistle, which is. Especially for them on the reach in from Presley, which is his third. Well, there's hesitancy here, right? So Presley makes a great pass and the little bobble that time By Van Lubin is what hurt him and then here goes that crab dribble He sees that Van Lubin goes to the top side. So he goes baseline and then there wasn't a box out and an easy finish Mark for three and he's fouled on the triple and suddenly that is the fourth from Malik Presley yeah, beginning to come unwound a little bit. We talked about the youth on this team, 10th youngest team in college basketball, and they're now beginning to show that youth and inexperience. You just have to allow room for Tremont Mark to come down there. Mary Stackhouse in his squad. And on a nice run to close the first half, 14 to 2 to take control. Now it's slipping away. Tremont Marks has got a dozen. By the way, what an amazing crowd in the arena tonight for the first night of the SEC tournament. Shout out SEC, best fan base in all of college basketball. Not even close. Not even close. Hogs, of course, well traveled. And I think we're going to break a trend because the last 10 SEC tournaments, Fish, seven of those winners came from either the one or the two seeds. I think this thing is wide open. I'm not saying Tennessee can't win it sure. or Kentucky wouldn't win it. But I think the opportunity for everybody else in the mix, maybe the top six seeds, is real. I would agree with that. One possession game. Lewis can't shake Davis. Here's Tyron Lawrence. Lawrence got a bump, turns it into a 12-footer, and Mitchell rips down another rebound. A gamble out front, and here's Mark going to the hole. Out to Davis. Evo Davis dishes to Brazil. Nothing doing to the Hogs that time. Battle the leading score of the last five. Didn't even touch it on that possession. And Davis tried to strip. Ezra Mignon is on the sideline. Looks to be getting stretched a little bit over in the corner by his bench. Right now, Tyron Lawrence really taking it upon himself to take the lead on this team, which he should be. Let's remember. Mignon and Lawrence at SEC Media Day said that they felt like they would be the best backcourt in all of SEC. And there are some good ones. Huh? I mean, Florida's is explosive. The yep. Rockies is maybe going lottery pick, and those oh, are two guys yeah. that come off the bench. Texas A&M's has carried them the entire season and perhaps into the NCAA tournament. And that is just a couple of them. Yep. Lawrence couldn't finish. Of course, Talon Cooper, Meechie Johnson, underrated, just like their team is. Great to see Meechie today around South Carolina. Shoot around, big smile on his face. I just get the feeling South Carolina's ready for the postseason. Into the corner, Mark hesitated. They were late to get to him. And Brazil fighting for the rebound. Tremendous effort for the Hogs. Arkansas has scored 14 of the last 16. 
Back clock now at five. Mitchell pink touch. Strong move. No. Big. Not quite able to get over this hump quite yet. They've expended so much energy to whittle the lead back down. Camateros for three. Yeah, why not? You look for experienced guys right now. Camateros played 100 games in South Dakota. Not his first rodeo. Mitchell starting from 15 feet. Camateros really has his hands full with him. That's his second. When it was 51 36, and then the Razorbacks just kept chipping away. Forget Mizzou and Georgia to follow this one. So we call it a night, and then we get set for four games tomorrow. Mitchell gives it up to Brazil. I'll go right back to Mitchell. Yeah, get him on the block, right? Yeah. Not what they're doing. Davis dances, finds Mitchell on the wing. Here's Brazil for three. That is what they're doing, and it almost paid off. Brazil one for four from deep tonight. And that handoff is blown up by Devo Davis, and he is hurt. Five on four for Vandy, and they will stop play. I, I think, and I'm hopeful, maybe Davis just banged knees with Mignon on the screen. Right. Well, he's tough as nails. You think about his career and his history, what he's meant in that Arkansas Razorback uniform. And it looks like he bumped his left knee, maybe. But he was complaining that Comateros pushed him. And I think he had a, a good complaint. Well, that is 240 versus a buck 85. The Comateros really was stationary. Debo Davis was trying to kind of bully his way through that screen. I like the no call by the official. Off the curl. Sack clock like at 15. Bandy consent to run a little bit of clock. Davis doing a great job on Mignon, denying him the basketball. He's an elite defender, but he puts his mind to a turnaround fadeaway air ball. Put back is there. For Jordan Williams for his first bucket of the night. With all of this length and athleticism, there's no way that the Commodores should be winning. You know, they're just winning by one, but they shouldn't be winning the glass war versus the Razorbacks. And a bump out front from Jordan Williams is his first. That's a fifth team foul on Vandy. Arkansas has only been to the free throw line 12 times tonight. The team that gets 25.6% of its points from the free throw line. That is the second highest rate in all of college basketball. Brazil will launch another. And that one's true. Yeah, they'll take that over those free throws. That's one of the reasons why they're not getting free throws. The Commodores continue to switch defenses, and particularly the matchup zone is what they've stuck with tonight. I think we see the 1-3-1 before the night's over as well. Mignon with the crossover. Downhill with the left. Mark the board. Here's Devo Davis. And Davis will fire a three. Got it! Goes three for Devo Davis. He's into double figures. He had missed ten threes in a row coming into this game. He's hit a couple tonight, and we got a two-point contest. This is the end where Arkansas has gotten back into this basketball game. Not pressuring as much or gambling. Now just playing straight up man-to-man. Camateros faces up on Mitchell. Shot clock is at two. Foley's his way in and left it short. Arkansas coming off of a hard-fought overtime loss Saturday at Alabama. Battle with his left. And he draws a whistle and will go to the line. But once you start getting stops defensively, then on the offensive end, you're able to get additional openings as well. And Brazil does a nice job on the first time and Debo Davis who's more than comfortable in these moments Sweet 16s elite eights 
when the game is on the line is where he plays his best. And it puts Caleb Battle at the free throw line. Five straight games of 20 points or more. Look at Devo Davis getting a stretch in at midcourt behind him. <laughs> you should well, have come to our group yoga class this morning. I've never seen that. <laughs> Hey, it works though, right? Oh, he knows he's got time. Battle's got another free throw. Oh, man. Ninth in school history now with 131 games played. Debo Davis, despite the tumultuous season that he's been through this year, yeah. has been as impactful as anybody lately in this Arkansas program. We see Makai Mitchell going back into the locker room. Hope everything's okay with him, but right now it is tied. Fifth tie of the game. Arkansas hasn't led since the 835 mark on Young Shakes battle. Beautiful pass inside, but they keep it on the perimeter. Magnon downhill and a foul on the drive. And that'll be charged to Caleb Battle. Not sure if Tyron Lawrence is resting, uh, is, is unable to play, but they're going to have to have him if the Commodores want to finish this victory here today. The Razorbacks are playing too well right now, too talented, too athletic, too long. Well, McCoy Mitchell right back on the bench for Arkansas. 16 fouls each way. You figure free throw contest would benefit Arkansas for the last eight minutes or so. So it looks like every time Ezra Magnon gets the basketball, they're going to double and force it out of his hands. Now he's able to find a whistle with 3.2 left on the shot clock. And that'll be a, sh be a shooting foul for Ezra Magnon. You know, we've seen that from Eric Musselman as much as anybody. I think he did it maybe in the Baylor game in the Elite Eight. He's, he did it against Auburn. I think they had Sharif Cooper at the time. He always has some type of element of surprise, which is always good when it comes into postseason. That's a third on Devo Davis. Magnon had a great game against LSU in the tournament opener for Vandy last year. He turned in a 17-point performance. Saturday afternoon, it's Mizzou's annual black and gold spring game from Parole Field. Coach Drink's team had a tremendous season last year beating Ohio State in the Cotton Bowl. That begins at 2 Eastern, 1 Central on SEC Network Plus and ESPN Plus. Get SEC Network Plus, go to secnetwork.com or download the ESPN app. Got a question for you. Yes, it is early for a spring game, if you were wondering. <laughs> what excites you most about the upcoming football season with the additions of Oklahoma and Texas? Oh, getting the chance perhaps to go to Norman and go to Austin where football is so very important By the way and in the state of Texas Wow big time three for mark and he's, he has 19 in that same span And Tremont mark going to the free throw line three years playing for Kelvin Sampson at Houston Junior from Dickinson, Texas and Dickinson high school makes it a four-point play the final four his freshman year. Last year started all 37 games for the Cougars. Akai Mitchell is back after another trip in the tunnel with the athletic training staff. Hard to see anything physically wrong with Makai Mitchell, but he's left twice now here in the second half. Anyone from the elbow. Banks it in. What a huge basket. They had nothing going on offensively. They still can't figure out how to attack the double, and Ezra Magnon is just saying, I have to go get a basket. And that's exactly what he did. Mark thinking the same thing, but left it short and begging for a whistle. Magnon from behind the screen, a whirling dervish to lay it in. Hit him in the spin cycle, young fella. I like him. A gamble and a near steal. Great effort by Presley, who's playing with four fouls. Battle downhill. Hangs and hits. Easy. Born to score. And they've got a couple of those guys. Jamon Mark 
and Caleb Battle can get a basket. They make tough baskets. I asked Caleb Battle when did he first find that confidence on the basketball court. He kind of looked at me like I was crazy, and he said, well, when I started playing. <laughs> Lubin tried to reverse, that got rejected. Picked up by Battle. Brazil really making his impact felt with some rim protection here in the second half. Battle again hangs and hits. Oh. He's got 13. He only had three at the break. You talk about just having a will to get to the rim. It was a bad defense by Lawrence. Started on the other end for Arkansas. Razorbacks have seven blocks tonight. Kick to the corner for a wide open three. Davis lost the rebound and got his hands on Lubin. And eventually a whistle and a foul, I believe, on Brazil. 50-50 balls. March Madness, you got to have those if you're the Razorback. Caleb Battle. Look at this is good defense. Good pressure, even good help. But he was just able to use his body contort his body in the right way and then still keep his focus off of the window to convert Now Ben Allen Lubin at the other end for Vandy. He's got another double-double his second of the season against Arkansas Kai Mitchell returns for the Hogs. He takes the place of Lawson Fifth double-double of the season for Ben Allen Lubin 71% yeah, free throw shooter in conference play these are all going to be huge down the stretch. Mm. Brazil got up high for that one. Vandy had two guys down. Mark gives it up. Three ball. Nope. And it's pulled down by Malik Presley. Let's see if they continue to double team Ezra Magnon. Mark's looking for help. They're slacking off of him now. Pump fake got him in the air. What a scores mentality. 20 now for Magnon. Yeah, he got him all right. Wow. You know, Vanderbilt scored 80 points for the first time of the year at Bud Walton Arena. I think they're going to need to get there tonight. Mark steps through to feed Mitchell. Pat Mitchell's got a dozen. Back and forth we go. Hogs. Back up by two. Lubin inside. To his left. Brazil may have twisted his ankle on that one. A little skip walking uh, coming back up the floor. Here's Devo Davis. And now Mitchell. Lowered his shoulder and banked it in. Yeah, right now, just not a lot of resistance at either end. Love the way both teams are attacking the basket. Not sure if it's fatigue or not wanting to foul, but I would continue to go to the rim on both sides. Eric must have been trying to get his guys to extend the defense. Lubin nearly walked with it. Instead, it's a live ball turnover, and Davis changes direction twice and then gets the whistle. But we have certainly seen the inexperience of the Commodores here in the second half. No matter who it's come from. And Coach Jerry Stackhouse said he just wanted his team to compete. And Van Leuven certainly would have walked if he had to come down with that basketball. And it allows more transition by the Razorbacks, who are a more aggressive and confident team here in the second half. Well, they gave Lubin that foul. Even though he won't even in on the play. That's his second. Instead of charging it to Magnon. And the Hogs going back to the free throw line with Devo Davis. Man, as he hit some big shots in his career. Well, we saw the turn, it seems like, every year in league play from the Razorbacks. And I think every analyst, every play-by-play -play probably expected something similar. Even though we discussed that it seemed like it was different this year, we thought the turn would happen, and it just never quite did.
but for the Razorbacks, they can still make a run here. They sure certainly could. They dug themselves a big hole, started one and six in SEC play. Now they have their largest lead of the game. And Brazil is getting stretched out. Four point hog lead under four to play. Next whistle will send us to a commercial break. Here's Lubin. Mignon has been the star for Vandy tonight, but they're just not defending him at 20 feet. Now a lazy catch turns into a Vandy turnover. Arkansas forced a five second call to start the second half, then got a quick bucket, and all of a sudden, the energy that was sorely lacking the first half of the Hogs was present. Here's Tremont Mark with a bump from Lawrence, then another, and good hands to knock it out of bounds by J.Q. Roberts. You know, Arkansas has really scored in multiple ways. Mark has put up points. Battle, we've seen some from him. Davis, uh, Mitchell on the interior. Brazil, they've got multiple weapons out there right now. Brazil waiting on the wing. He's hit a couple of threes. Meanwhile, Devo Davis launches. And Lawrence the rebound. It's probably your best bet if you're the Commodores was trying to force Devo Davis to knock one down from the perimeter, even though he's made some today. Mignon into Davis. Tried to pass it off and said turns it over. Battle to Davis on the run. And a rebound to Battle, and he's going back to the free throw line. It's going to be the eighth and ninth free throw attempts of the night from Battle. What has surprised me is that even when they get out into transition, the Razorbacks still don't have the chemistry. Now, we mentioned battles out some this season. Brazil's been out. Davis left the program, came back. But if they could formulate some chemistry, man, this Razorback team really has a lot of weapons. Battle of the free throw line. Remember last year they had 11 new scholarship players, four grad transfers, four freshmen. Then the roster turned over again. They went hard into the transfer portal for guys like Battle, Mark, and finally Brazil, healthy and able to play. Battle's got 15. And now it looks like the Razorbacks has they really backed that pressure off a little bit. How about the way they've guarded Mignon? Davis extending it for the first time. Otherwise, they've really been slacking off of it. Yeah, I mean, Davis has been the key in the second half. They've trapped him some, but that size of Davis at 6'6 versus Mignon at 6 feet has been tough on Mignon. I was just watching Debo Davis really looking at his face as he was ding up on Caleb Battle. And he wasn't even watching Battle. His eyes were off the ball and going back to see where that screen was possibly coming from to see it coming but his hands were active in front of that sure I, I, it's kind of like no look defense yeah I know exactly what you're saying what, Tom what you're talking about is his defensive IQ and we often talk about high basketball IQs but good defenders often have really good defensive IQs as well Reed Shepard over at Kentucky his anticipation skills are sensational and y'all misses the front end of a one-on-one -on -one. Battle gives it up to Brazil to let the shot clock get to single digits. So Lawrence defended Battle well, but he needs to keep him from getting it again. Davis too strong and a foul on the rebound, and that's going to go against Vandy and charge to Evan Taylor in Arkansas in the bonus on this end. You can see the sense of frustration on Coach Stackhouse's face right now. And we said earlier that the Commodores needed to keep that lead to keep the pressure on the Razorbacks. And now, Ty Mitchell and the Razorbacks playing carefree. So here's Mitchell at the free throw line. Just two for four tonight. He's really improved at the strike. 79% on the season. Up from 49% as a career free throw shooter coming into this year. Well, it a, can be done. Yeah, it can be done, and uh, you have to give him a lot of credit. Give him credit. How about Manuel Basaki that hasn't been playing a lot in the starting lineup to show that he's put on for Texas A&M. Started it, the last three. Yeah, listen, pay your dues. Put him to work. You don't always have to leave and go somewhere else to get it done. Here's Tyron Lawrence. Step back 16-footer is off the mark. Mitchell, no. Rebounded by Vandy. 
Under two minutes to play. Commodore's down eight. Magnon dishes. Lubin finishes. Nice. Now you've got to get some pressure if you're the Commodores. Only a few possessions left. You need to extend this basketball game, and you're going to need some help from the Razorbacks. Loose ball. Mitchell just defending him. Nowhere to go. Vandy finally gets it out of there. Here's Magnon. Whoa! That was an aggressive flush attempt. And it turns into a foul. And it's Devo Davis who gets whistled for his third. Ezra Magnon does a nice job of getting to the rim. And there is enough of a shove by Devo Davis. It, it may not look like much, and it may actually not be much, but when an offensive player especially is in the air, yeah. the officials generally look for that because just one little one little nudge can send you off balance for Pugs in here. Well, and I believe it, it's the reason why he missed that dunk. I, I believe having when you go up in the air like that a couple of centimeters or inches one way or the other makes a huge difference it's the right call here's jq roberts and then bandy able to get at least one point with the clock stop at 127 to play taylor takes his seat presley back in playing with four Another one coming for Roberts. Who's perfect from the free throw line tonight. I expect immediate pressure, make or miss for the Commodore. And if you're the Razorbacks right now, you gotta be strong with the basketball. And maintain your aggressiveness. I like the insertion of L. Ellis back in this basketball game to have some ball handling too for Eric Musselman. Whoa! Bad pass, nearly stolen by Lawrence. Arkansas able to get it across midcourt. 118 to play. Eric Musselman saying, wait, wait, wait. They want to run some clock. And now they'll start with 10. Clark gives it up. Shot clock now at 5. Here's Ellis. Shot clock at 2. Challenge 3. No good. Yeah, Ellis, Four point has been, deficit. Ellis has been on that sideline for a while. That's a tough shot just coming into the game. Magnon back to the rim again. 22 for Ezra Magnon. One possession game. A trap. A near steal. The ball is loose. And Bandy has it, but the possession arrow belongs to Arkansas. <laughs> Ezra it's a side inbounds for L. Ellis. Plenty of timeout. Mitchell gives it right back to Ellis. McCott Mitchell didn't want anything to do with that. <laughs> want to get battle a touch. Ellis gives it up to Mitchell. Shot clock at 10. Now Tremont Mark has been a second half superstar. Through traffic, pull up three. Offensive rebound. Ellis was the one that secured it, and now Battle will be going to the free throw line. Remember I told you about that great Eric Musselman comeback here in this very building against two-seed Cincinnati in the NCAA tournament? Yep. They won it with an offensive rebound. What was that stat you gave us earlier about it been like a million years that Arkansas hadn't come back? 1945. They've only come back from... This kind of poor offensive performance in the first half twice since 1945. Battle at the free throw line. It was 41-27 Vandy at halftime. 16 now for battle. Well, you talked about this at the outset. The Caleb Battle is a guy who makes his living at the charity strike. For the Commodores, make or miss, you do not have to have a three, but you have to score quick. I look for Esmond Manuel to go directly to the rim. The Battle knew that one was going in. Four-point deficit for Vandy. Manuel gives it up, gets it right back. 
as you expected, and he kisses it in past the reach of Mitchell. 24 for Magnon. Here's the Vandy press again. Shot clock off. 13 seconds left. A steal! Lawrence has it, and now Magnon with nine. They can play for the tie or the win. Here's Magnon into Mitchell. Three. Magnon well guarded. Fan away. Got it! Pedro Magnon has done Twice since 1945, Vanderbilt has won a game without scoring 30 points in the first half and giving 45. 1979 against Houston and 1951 against Ole Miss in this state over in Memphis. Thanks to hard stats for those numbers. Here's Battle with the drive. And it's yanked down by Tyron Lawrence. Keep your eye on Malik Presley. Only guy on the floor right now with real foul trouble. He has four. He has to be cautious. Vandy has it led since the 7-10 mark. And there it is. Ben Allen Lubin with the jam. Told you I thought they'd need 80 again to try yeah. to secure this victory. They've certainly got it. Let's see the response of the Razorbacks now. Mitchell finds battle. Battle back cut draws three defenders and gets the foul by going into Roberts. The third on JQ Roberts. Like the decision making that time. And Jerry Stackhouse felt like that battle initiated the contact and Roberts had his hands straight up. But the fact of the matter is battle could have taken the three on that first play. But he passed it and got it back. And he did a nice job of using the back cut, moving without the basketball to get something at the rim. Caleb Battle went on a historical scoring run over a three-game stretch, including the game against Vandy earlier this year. And in that stretch, he had 49 free throw attempts over a three-game period. Sinks some balls. Tied at 80, 4-11 to play in overtime. Razorbacks got back into the game in the second half by pressuring and double teaming Ezra Magnon. Let's see if they play straight up or if they go back to that here in the overtime. They got size on him. Mark got lost and he got lucky that Magnon couldn't knock it down. Yeah, he rarely misses those times. Hogs looking to reclaim the lead. Arkansas led by four with 4.03 to play. Ellis wants the screen for Mitchell and goes the other way. Mark for three. In and out. Mm. Tough break. All of Mark's 18 have come in the second half. Tyron Lawrence has been quiet. Really putting a lot on Ezra Magnon's shoulders. That was a double. Ellis ran out. They ended up with the open Presley. Presley can't shake Brazil and he walked with it. Yeah. Good call by Terry Ogilvie. Probably walked two or three times and just got a little careless. Tried to rush when he got underneath the basket. And I think Coach Stackhouse goes now back to that 1 2 2. Battle penetrates. And Kyle Mitchell didn't even take it up. Three minutes of playing overtime number one. Don't understand that. Battle now has moving on. Finds Mitchell. Out to Brazil for three. Big triple for Trevor Brazil. So that's why he threw it out. Yeah. <laughs> Brazil's hit three of six from deep. Came in shooting 32% from behind the arc. Brazil didn't play a lot with Conzo Martin. The third of the season last year with the Razorbacks. He's still extremely young, but so talented. Here's Magnon, who hadn't shot a three all night. He's got another trip to the line after the off-balance move by L. Ellis. You know, at SEC Media Days, I thought that Trevor Brazil was really just going to have an outstanding year. He's got good size at 6'10", 220 pounds. Actually, one of 20 on the Carl Malone Power Forward of the Year watch list. And, you know, just didn't quite get healthy, didn't find his way this year. But I still think he's got a nice upside. Out of Kickapoo High School in Springfield, Missouri. Same high school as Brad Pitt. Must be in the water there. Another one coming from Agnon. Rebounded by Mitchell. Big miss. 
takes the pressure off the Razorbacks, allows himself to separate a little bit on this offensive trip. Mitchell directing traffic now. Here's Battle. Finds Mitchell down the lane. Pretty. Screen and roll in that middle third of the floor. So difficult to defend. Mignon has matched his career high with 27. Lubin for three. Rebounded by Caleb Battle. Again, a four-point lead for Arkansas. Commodore's running out of time. They've had some success running their zone. They're deciding to stay man-to-man. -man. Battle going back to the line again. If that's Presley, that's his number. That's number five for him. Caleb Battle, we said, was a downhill driver. And he just continued to fight you know guys that are on the scouting report and you say he's a downhill driver stay in front of him watch his chest but when you get out there in between the lines Caleb Battle is a prime example of it being much more easy to say than to do he has been money from the free throw line that foul by the way was on Tyron Lawrence 11 20 point game this season for Battle who's sixth in a row he's got 22 and Arkansas on a 10-1 run Quick shot on the turnaround by Luther. He's got 21. Tom, there's no quit in this Commodore team. They could have given up multiple times tonight. Taking the personality of their coach. Approach the one-minute mark. That'll guard by Tyron Lawrence. Man, you don't want to foul if you're the Commodore. It's late in the clock. Back like it's seven. Battle for three. Well, that could have been the dagger instead. It ends up in the hands of Magnon. Lawrence went down hard. Magnon going to the rack. And he got a foul on his way in. It's a third on Tremont Mark. Magnon is a prime example of being a coach on the floor. Knowing your strengths and your weaknesses. This time of the year, you got to know what your assets and your liabilities are. He knows his asset is his ability to burst, get by defenses, knock down mid-range jump shots, and instead of settling from the perimeter, as you see so many guys do, he does a nice job of attacking the defense in transition. So Magnon at the free throw line. And these guys who are going to the free throw line, are earning their money. Career high now 28 for the senior from Antioch, California. He transferred in from UC Davis. To make it a one possession game. And he rolls it in. Timeout taken by Jerry Stackhouse. It's a three point Arkansas lead. Game number one. Arkansas to inbound. 46.9 left. Clinging to a three point lead. Pressure from Vandy. Here's Battle. Didn't get the whistle, gives it to Mitchell. That's the guy they wanted to foul, but couldn't. And now a step through. And Vandy gonna play it straight up with a 17 second difference in shot and game clock. Lawrence on Battle. Here's Mitchell again. Shot clock at six, and it is hands of the score, Caleb Battle. Downhill, layup, good! Wow! Five-point lead! Here comes Magnon, 16 left. Left his feet, Lawrence, they gotta put it up. Down two scores, Magnon for his first three, and Mitchell with the rebound, and they finally, no, they never got the foul! And the clock will run out on the opportunity for Vandy, and after a lackluster first.